David Gross for the Bass Guitar Channel. Thanks for checking in. Hope you guys had a great weekend. Well, over this weekend, I um, had a conversation with a good friend of mine, another bass player, and he started talking about, well, you know, the C7 flat 9 flat 5 chord, which he must have been playing over the weekend, uh, is really part of the D flat, or almost all of the notes in the D flat melodic minor scale are in that C7 flat 9 flat 5. And I said, that's all well and good, but here, let me stir up a little controversy. I don't look at it that way. I mean, if I'm a bass player and I see a C7 flat 9 and a flat 5, I'm thinking, what are the notes that articulate that? Well, it's the C, which is the root, the E, that's the third, the G, that's the five, the B flat, which is the flat seven. So there you got your dominant seven chord. Then D flat, which is the flat nine, and the G flat, which is the flat five. However, I would think of it more as a sharp 11 versus a flat five. But it got me thinking because you know, I just recently released Bass a la Melodic Minor Modes, which is a book all about the melodic minor. And what struck me was, oh my God, if I'm going to be relating the melodic minor to the major, then, and here's where the controversy comes in, is there really only one scale? And is that scale the chromatic scale? And is everything based on major? which it is, so I can't look at it as, oh, the C7 flat nine flat five isn't in D flat, because as a bass player, I need to hit that root on that chord, because if I hit when everyone else is hitting, I'm wrong. Now, for other soloists, saxophonists, etc., and so on, they may want to think of it this way, but as a bass player, I think of it as a C chord. Now, we're going to go to the piano in a minute because I want to play something. But when I think in terms of that particular chord, I also try and figure out, well, if those six notes are my available notes, what have I got? I've got the C, E, and G. Then I have a D flat, a G flat, and a B flat. But if I switch that around, I've got a G flat major triad. So I've got a C triad, G flat major. So right away you have a bunch of exercises. But first, let's go to the piano. So here we are at the piano, and let's listen to what the C dominant seven chord sounds like. It's a C, E, G, and the B flat. Now, let's add the flat nine. And now let's add either you call it a sharp 11 or a flat five on top of that. Now, as I said, you can look at it as two different triads. C. And then, if you put that flat five That becomes either an F sharp major chord or a G flat major chord. So that B flat, which is part of the dominant seventh, becomes the third of the um, G flat or F sharp major chord. And what I find interesting is that when you put it all together, it's got that suspended quality
So let's go over to the base and do some exercises. Now that we've discovered that the C7 flat 9 flat 5 is actually two major triads, one starting on C, one on G flat, I like figuring out exercises that will really incorporate those two chords. So one of the first is where are all the C majors in one position? So you have C, C major starting on the E, or the first inversion, starting on the second inversion, G, and then back to starting on the root. Let's do that again. Now, we have the G flat major triad. The next available note next to the C is actually the D flat, which is the fifth, which means that we're going to start the G flat major triad in second inversion. Gets me up to that B flat on the 15th fret. This lesson seems to be running a little long, so I'm going to cut it into two parts. So this is part one for today. There's plenty for you to work on, and I'll see you tomorrow and we'll finish this up. Have a great day and see you tomorrow. Thank you.